to should not be on keto diet if if you're on SGLT2 inhibitors. What are they? Jardiums, Farsiga, Invokana, and Steglatro. These are the four SGLT2 inhibitors in the market. If you're on one of these agents, first of all, these agents can make you prone to diabetic ketoacidosis. And if you put yourself into ketosis, then you're looking for trouble. Another problem is that these agents, they actually work good in a way because they make you urinate blood sugar and you're losing 300 calories on average a day by just using these agents. Uh, but then they also make you dehydrated because every time you urinate glucose, it attracts the water with it. So if you're using this Jardians, Farsiga, Steglatro, or Invokana, you have to stay hydrated. Now, if you're going on a keto diet, that's going to make you dehydrated. Why? Because the carbohydrates actually hold the water. Just like when you urinate carbohydrates or sugar in your urine and you lose water with it, Anytime you cut down on the carbohydrates, your body will lose water. So as a result, initial weight loss that you see, oh my gosh, this is working so great, is actually water. You're not really losing weight in the first couple of weeks. In the first two weeks, you mostly lose water. And the problem is if you do not replace it, you're going to get dehydrated. Again, that increases the risk of kidney stones, that increases the risk of kidney failure. So let's think about this. If you have underlying chronic kidney disease and you become dehydrated, what happens? You will go into acute on top of chronic kidney disease and you're going to lose more kidney function. So you definitely don't want to do that. If you have a chronic kidney disease especially, or if you have other medications or other risk factors that can make you dehydrated, you have to really make sure that you are under care of a doctor who cares about you, who will monitor you closely, and will prevent any problem. And if there is any problem, they have to intervene and make sure you do not go into severe dehydration status. So what else happens with dehydration? So you're not only losing water with keto diet, but you're also losing sodium and potassium. Now potassium is very, very important for your blood pressure. So if you're not having enough potassium, you have to make sure that you're supplementing potassium it could, be, it could be potassium pills, it could be electrolyte drinks. You have to make sure that you're getting your potassium back in, otherwise your blood pressure may spike. Now, another problem is that you're losing sodium as well. Now, when you lose sodium, you, that's one of the reasons that you feel like keto flu, so, losing sodium and potassium are the two major electrolytes in our body will put you down. So you wanna replace your sodium, but you have to be careful, especially if you have a high blood pressure it is a thin balance there, so like unless you have a gauge in your body, which you don't know, uh, is right. So you're just replacing, but you don't really know how much you're replacing. So that is the problem with the keto diet. So how much potassium should you replace? How much sodium you should replace? You're just making 